doesn't that look awesome? It's just cutting some plywood right now, but this opens up so many new possibilities for future projects. I'm so excited for this. Oh, and the smell is pretty nice as well. I thought I would suffocate here, but with proper ventilation, uh, smells smells good. I'll get back to what's currently being cut later on, but let's not rush things and uh, let's start at the beginning. Hey, I'm Konstantin and this is the Orter LaserMaster 2 Pro. I kindly got this unit sent to me for free by well, a marketing agency on behalf of the manufacturer. However, no one has had any authority over the making of this video but me. And that means that this video is going to be well as unbiased as realistically possible. But let's not kid ourselves. I'm already kind of biased um, by my own design style and on top of that there will also be a referral link in the description down below which you can use if you want to support this channel however that of course adds a whole new conflict on, of interest on top of all my other more personal biases but with all that said i think i still prepared an enjoyable and interesting video watching experience for you so sit back relax and enjoy the show or don't it's all up to you. This CNC laser has a 400 by 400 millimeter work area and the cutting is done by a diode laser with up to 5.5 watts of output power. It comes as a partially assembled kit whereby the X gantry already is pre-assembled. So the main things that still have to be done by the end user is to assemble the rest of the frame, to install the belts for the Y axis and to connect the wiring harness. Now I made the mistake of using the instructions that were included in the box which were pretty difficult to follow due to the pictures being tiny and pixelated and they also had very little contrast. The information within seems to be correct, it's just that it was quite hard to follow. And only after I was finished I realized that there were QR codes on the front cover. If I had followed that link it would have taken me to a webpage with very detailed instruction videos and a very extensive PDF document explaining quite literally everything there is to know. While putting everything together I was pleasantly surprised to uncover more and more small details like these aluminium profiles which were anodized after machining instead of before, leaving them with a more uniform look. These screen printed rulers which mark the usable work area are pretty neat as well. Or these belts. There are a lot of bad belts out there and seeing as these are clearly not Gates belts, I was expecting to see timing belts made out of 100% neoprene, so without any tension members. But from what I can tell these belts are reinforced with what seems to be a generous amount of aramid. And then there are these corners where two types of corner connectors were used per corner. I'm pretty sure that one type would have sufficed instead of two, which makes this frame incredibly stiff. The only mess up they had was with the hole to ground the X gantry. See, there would have been no contact to ground if I hadn't filed off the powder coating first. The X axis doesn't really need to be grounded anyway, but I thought I might as well make a good contact since the hole is already there. The electronics are housed in this sleek looking sheet metal enclosure. The reason why this enclosure is that small is because there's no internal power supply. Instead the power supply is this 24 volt external power brick. I'm aware that not everyone likes these kinds of external power bricks but I do as that means that there are no fans running when the laser is idle and it also means that there's no exposed or partially exposed mains wiring anywhere. The board itself has a 32 bit ARM chip. They went with the same Cortex M3 chip as the one used on blue pill dev boards. That means that you could compile and program the chip with whichever firmware you want, in case that's what tickles your pickle. The drivers are HR4988s, which are very similar to the A4988s that we all know and love from such hits as I taught my 3D printer how to sing and dance. <laughs> awesome name. Yeah, I had kind of forgotten what square wave stepping sounds like, but luckily I do remember again. And I kind of thought we moved past the time in history where all stepper motors sounded like R2-D2s, but I guess that's not the case. Anyway, they work fine. It's more of an elitist kind of thing. And in case you're not familiar with the topic, there are stepper drivers out there which make the motors whisper silent, which these don't. 
Now getting back to the board, it has a pinout for X, Y and Z stepper motors, however this laser doesn't have a Z motor. Instead the Z height is set manually by lowering the laser onto this aluminium cylinder. Having a Z motor to do that automatically would be great and it would also be a lot of fun to just try out. The only issue is, neither the place where the Z motor driver is supposed to go nor its surrounding passive components have been populated. That's kind of a bummer as that makes adding a motorized Z-axis a bit more difficult. There are also three pins which are labeled as light, probe and door. I did not do any further research on those pins but it seems like they can be used for those things or any other things that you could use them for. As for the software, the controller uses Gerbil, spelled G-R-B-L, which is the most used open source motion control firmware for CNC's and lasers. Which means that you can use any serial G-code sender you'd like, but Orta recommends Laser Gerbil, which is free, or Lightburn, which is what I used and which costs $60. Both work just fine, it's just that Lightburn has more options and runs natively on my Mac, so I don't have to spin up a VM every time I want to use the laser, which is right now. The first test I did was with some cardboard. I used some aluminium foil as backing so I wouldn't damage the table. And this was done with 80% power and 300mm per minute cutting speed for the outlines. The edge of my name was done with the same power but at 1000mm per minute. The result already looked pretty nice but it didn't cut all the way through. So the second try was done with the same 80% power but with a speed of 100mm per minute and two passes. This time it went all the way through but seeing as the sides were quite charred, a higher feed rate with more passes would have been better. Here I tried some 4mm thick balsa plywood and as you can see I'm sparing you some of the failures. This last run was done with a feed rate of 500mm per minute for the cuts and 1000mm per minute for the edge. And now you can also see the reason why my previous tries failed. I did not expect to have to do 7 passes in order to just barely make it through. Next up I tried this thin sheet of MDF with some kind of white plastic coating on top. I was not sure how well the white color would absorb the laser, but as it turns out the laser went through the white plastic without any issues, but it took 16 passes to get through the entire board. And the smell wasn't particularly pleasant either, so MDF got a no from me. Lastly I tried this sandwich of black painted aluminium and some kind of black resin in the center. And to no one's surprise the black paint got etched away but the aluminium sheet stayed totally intact. Which does look quite premium in my opinion. But as you can tell this one wasn't the first try either as this is what happened during the first try. Yeah, that sound came from the laser, not my smoke alarm. More specifically, there's this infrared diode which is used to detect flames and unfortunately it also detects no flames. I like the idea, but the risk of dying from a heart attack is way higher than burning to death, so it has to go. To be fair, I just found out while editing that they seem to have solved the issue with their latest firmware version. I didn't test it yet, so I can't confirm, but their documentation seems to be really thorough on how to update, so this should be an easy fix. There are some other safety features that are more useful however, such as exposure duration detection where the laser automatically goes into an error state if it has been powered on on the same spot for 100 seconds. It also has some kind of accelerometer to detect and go into an error state when it's being moved. This feature works well for detecting high impact such as if it falls off a table or something, but smaller movements don't trigger this error state. Any connection issues will also initiate a safe error state as you don't want it to lose control over the connection and then having to helplessly watch the laser just sit there and burn down your house. Although, what do I know? Maybe you do. In which case this feature is a bad thing. Next up are safety glasses. Now I hate to say this, but these glasses which are shipped with a laser are of the wrong color. This is basic color science. The laser emits light with a wavelength of 445 nanometers, which is blue. Now if you filter blue out, which is what you want, then the resulting color will be orange, not green. These green glasses primarily filter out red and not blue. Now Orton does include a certificate from C-Lab or Celeb, which certifies that these glasses are in compliance with the standard EN207 colon 2017. But that is a very broad standard as it includes laser safety glasses for wavelengths of 180 nanometers, which is UV, up to 1000 micrometers, which is infrared. If these goggles would actually block all of that, 
they would be pitch black. On top of that, these glasses are only labeled with the standard EN166.F, which is only used to define its mechanical strength and not its optical characteristics. Now the bottom line is that these glasses probably do filter out some of the blue light, it's just that the certificate is misleading to the average consumer and these might therefore give a false sense of security. Now as for my part, I have ordered some orange ones, which should arrive soon, but they haven't arrived yet. And what's funny is that the laser actually comes with a polycarbonate laser cover, which does have the right color. And this laser cover is actually something I do appreciate more than I thought I would. It does block the entire laser beam path when looking at it from normal viewing angles. But let's be clear, even with proper laser glasses and this cover, the safety of the laser doesn't compare to a properly enclosed laser. X-axis, backlash and accuracy test take one. Before starting the next project, I first had to do some tests. The backlash turns out to be around 0.1 millimeters, so let's compensate for that. And yeah, it doesn't get any better than that. The y-axis has a bit more backlash, probably because I didn't get the belts tight enough, but now I'll compensate again and yeah, absolutely perfect. Now I could get started with the next project. I designed these things and used them to mount the laser to the sheet of MDF, which is going to be the work area from now on. I could leave it as is, but since I now already have a perfectly positioned laser cutter, I might as well make it a bit more useful. For this project I decided to take the orange cover off, as it makes filming much easier and it makes the shape of the beam more visible. Alright, that came out really well. This will make aligning the parts much easier, as I now know that the grid matches the coordinates of the laser exactly. The grid lines show a characteristic of these types of multimodal diode lasers, which is that the curve, or line width, is about twice as high as it is wide. That's because the laser dot is rectangular by nature, as seen here when I put the laser out of focus. This can be a bit annoying, but on the other hand, the line in Y direction is so incredibly fine, that you could double all engravings in Y direction to make it look more even and still end up with very fine lines. Now I wanted to see how well the laser module handles high continuous loads, so I recreated the ThyssenKrupp test tower, which is a local landmark here in the Black Forest of Germany. It's used for testing elevators and, as a fun side note, it has the tallest observation deck of all of Germany. I've already 3D printed this tower before, but I wanted to see how well the twisted geometric shape would translate when stacked with 3mm thick layers. So I sliced it up and created 98 separate DXF files, which were then imported into Lightburn. Okay, I spent like an entire night on this. Plenty of hours went into this design and I'm not even sure if it's going to work. I did a lot of testing. I didn't really film all of it because I was kind of annoyed um, by how much time this took. But these are some slices that I created and they are all enumerated. These numbers are going to be engraved. There's a stick up here that's going to combine all of these pieces. So let's just give this a go and hope for the best. Put my goggles on and start. It's doing something.
I think this turned out great. All the features are clearly distinguishable and even the windows came out perfectly. I also really like how the color is completely brown when viewed from one side, but as it's moved around, more and more of the uncharred surfaces begin to show, which I think creates a really nice contrast. Only here at the foot of the tower I find the contrast to look a bit strange. I think it would have looked better if I had etched those surfaces with the laser. For me as a hobby tinker this laser is mostly just a toy, but I can also see how this laser can be used for more serious applications, especially if etching is all you need. And as I've shown, cutting works really well uh, for cardboard and plywood, thin plywood, and dark acrylic should also work really well, but I didn't try that. But it's just such a chore, it took two hours to cut this tower, and admittedly my cut sheet was not very well optimized, but my point remains, five passes at, what was it, 500 millimeters per second, uh, millimeters per minute, for three millimeter thick balsa, and seven passes for four millimeter thick balsa, just takes a long time, there's no way around it. Especially knowing that CO2 lasers, even the cheapest ones, can do this in a fraction of the time. Here, take a look at this. This is a K40 CO2 laser, one of the cheapest ones out there, and it's easily cutting with one pass only. On the other hand, if you're in the market of specifically a diode laser like this one, then this would be the laser I would recommend. Now take this, again with a huge grain of salt, because I did not test any other diode lasers before in my life. But Having already designed and constructed a couple of NC machines, 3D printers that is, but they're kind of similar, I can just tell how much passion and how much love they put into this machine. It's just, it starts with double the amount of corner connectors, then the clean cable routing. Well, except for this cable. However, I'll give them a pass on that because it's one single cable. And then look at this pulley. This pulley might look kind of strange to some of you as the way it's mounted is not usually how it's mounted on other 3D printers. But this is actually the way it's supposed to be because the moment arm that acts on the shaft and the bearings is much lower because the belt is much closer to the first bearing. And then belts that are actually aligned and parallel to themselves. Then the cable chain that's actually aligned the way it's supposed to be. Then all the strain relief. I mean, this strain relief and this strain relief is very much necessary, but the strain relief here, it's theoretically necessary, but... Oh, I... There are so many 3D printers that don't do this. In fact, I haven't seen it done anywhere on any hobby 3D printers. Correct me if I'm wrong, I, I love to see more printers that, you know, do it correctly. And having a strain relief on the end of the cable chain, that is correct. That's the way how you should do it. It's just, I, I have never seen that before on 3D printers. I'm talking about 3D printers all the time because that's what I'm familiar with, of course, but you know. They're mechanically very similar. And they even grounded the x-axis and the laser module itself, even though there isn't even any wall power connected straight to this machine. It's all going through an external brick. I mean... I, I don't know, it just... It warms my heart, I love it. I know that those are small and nitpicky things, but this high level of attention to detail just makes me trust Orter, the company, and also trust the longevity of this laser itself, because even though I've only used this laser for like two weeks, I can trust Orter that they made not only the right decisions with the things that I can see, but also with the things that I can't see or that I've overseen. But I do also have some bad, bad things to say. First of all, those goggles. Why they didn't just ship orange goggles is kind of baffling, to be honest. I mean... They must have known that their laser is blue, right? And also there's no air assist, which is a stream of high velocity and high static pressure air, which blows straight into the cut, which helps with blowing away the smoke and charred stuff. And air assist would be really handy to have on specifically a diode laser because they don't have that much power. Then there's no housing, no fume extractor, no air filtration system, and oh yeah, the optional LCD screen, which costs only a couple of bucks to manufacture, is a 70 euro upsell on their website. That's kind of much. All those things would be 
really nice to have first of all but on the other hand to some of you this might actually be a deal breaker because not having an um, enclosure it's that's kind of dangerous but on the other hand they don't mislead anyone into thinking that these features are somehow included so I can't exactly blame them for that, of course. But I think that that's all there is to say about the Laser Master 2 Pro from Orter. If you think I missed something, please do let me know in the comments. As for me, I'm really excited to have this in my tool belt. Just the fact that I can finally cut, even if it's just wood and acrylic, that I finally can cut stuff like that at, with a super high resolution and engrave stuff. It opens up so many new possibilities and yeah, I'm really excited about it. As I said, there will be a referral link to this laser in the description down below, which you can use if you want to support this channel. You don't have to use it. There will also be another link and there will also be other reviews from other YouTubers, which you might want to check out if you want to hear some different opinions on this laser, because there are quite some reviews out there about the or the Laser Master 2 Pro. All right, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you very soon. Goodbye.